Linda's Pantry and today I'm going to go ahead and bring you along for some quick and easy tips on how to care for your Dutch oven in between cooks. Now I made the biscuits for you and I could have done this for you in the, uh, the latter part of the video but I don't want to make these videos too long so this is a separate cleaning and maintenance video on its own and if you guys didn't see the biscuit recipe that I just did for you there it's a chili cheese ch chili cheddar uh, biscuit recipe that is absolutely phenomenal they're irresistible do not need butter they just are so tender and phenomenal oh my gosh unbelievable so i hope you get a chance to try them i'll leave an i card um I'll leave a link in the iCard above for you to go watch that. I'll also leave the playlist of the other Dutch oven videos that I've been doing so you guys can watch all of them at your leisure and share them with others that you know do Dutch oven cooking or are interested in it. I have a girlfriend who said she was too scared to use hers and um, I think that that's uh, that uh, fear stops a lot of us from doing something we really are interested in doing so jump in there what's the worst that can happen you make something delicious that's right that's all that can happen I'm sure so in the bottom I mean you can see this is really clean um, the underneath has some ash on it and I keep the inside and the outside of my Dutch oven I treat it as if it's going to touch my food inside and outside I want it as in good of condition as I can possibly keep it. Now my lid, I always dump the ashes out before I bring it in the house, but it's got a, quite a bit of ash on it. In theory, you don't really have to clean this off if you're gonna continue to use it over and over, but I want my lid to look fantastic when I put it away. I don't want it to look um, too weathered, if that makes sense. I want the, the uh, the finish on that to be just as good as the finish on the inside of my pot. So this is how I do it. There's others out there that can do it, you know, other ways for you. So I'm really only going to wipe any of the crumb loose with paper toweling. Now, if this had something that was stuck on there, um, that was a little harder to get off, that might be different. But let me bring you in close and I'm gonna show you how I clean this up. This one will be extremely easy to clean because it doesn't have any food that's stuck on there. So I don't really need to boil it or do anything like that. So super easy. Okay, come on in. Okay, so here we go. We've got our Dutch oven in the sink and I'm just gonna run some water here. I've got, this is a large, um, scrub brush for this and I really save this specifically for my Dutch ovens and you're just gonna take plain water and go on the inside if it looks like there's something stuck on there then I can use either the edge of this or I do have a couple little plastic tools that scrape any bad stuff that might be stuck on there off okay then we're gonna dump that Let's move this over here. Turn this upside down. And as you can see, now the lid or the bottom of this also has some ash and, and stuff that I don't want on there. So I'm gonna go ahead with the water again and my brush and give it a good scrub. Now, obviously this is only gonna be against the heat source. For the most part, this is not gonna be uh, in contact, it's not gonna be in contact with food, it's gonna be in contact with the heat source. But I do like to keep it from um, getting any rust going on it. I don't want that to happen to my Dutch oven, and it can, believe it or not, if you don't care for the bottom. Now I'm going to take paper toweling, and I apologize for any of the clangs. Cast iron's a little hard to manage without making noise. So I'm going to go ahead with the paper toweling, go around the outside, dry, dry it as well as I can. And then I've got my Lodge um, seasoning spray here. Uh, this is probably one of the best things that I've found to use for your cast iron. So go ahead and spray, um, and there's other ones out there, trust me, I would, I'd be up for any of them. Spray your cast iron bottom and sides. We're gonna wipe this, any excess off. So you can see the finish is already looking better. 
because it's getting a little bit of a drink of moisture. And I'm going to go around the outside edges with the excess. You don't need a lot and you're also continuing to hand dry it. It's going to finish the drying on the stove. Now, for the inside, I do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and sometimes I will wait until this gets a little bit drier and let the pores of the cast iron open up before I spray it. But in this situation, it's probably just as easy to spray it right now. And you don't want a lot. You could use bacon fat. You could use flaxseed oil. Um, you could use almost any oil. I don't like to use um, uh, some vegetable oils become sticky. So you've got to be really um, kind of picky and make sure you wipe any excess out after it heats up on the stove. So let's do the lid down. Same thing, the lid is just as important to me as the, uh, the pan itself. So hot water, give it a scrub. And I do this even when we're out camping. I make a fresh start with my lid and my coals going on there every time. It doesn't take any work at all to do this. And that brush really does help get in the cracks there. So we'll get that. The inside, as you can see, it's pretty, it's pretty much uh, got its waterproof seal uh, on there. I don't know that I need to re-season that at this point, but for kicks and giggles, we'll do it. So again, just like I did the bottom, give it a little spray, and because it doesn't need a lot. Okay, hand dry it with your paper toweling. And look, doesn't that look better? You don't want to have those ashes on there. Now, do you? No. Nope. <laughs> okay, a little spray of the oil again. And we are just about ready to go to the stove. And I will take you over to the stove and let you see how this comes out and what I do next. And we've got a Dutch oven cook coming up guys, it is going to be fantastic. So if you want to see pizza in the Dutch oven, I'm making pepperoni pizza today for lunch and in the Dutch oven. And then coming up next is going to be chili and a cornbread stack. So I hope you stay tuned for those videos because they'll be coming up right, right behind this one. Okay. Let's get it over to the stove. Okay. I've got my flame on underneath the Dutch oven and I'm just going to bring it up to a smoking point. When that starts to waft a little bit of smoke. I leave it for about 10, 15 seconds and then turn it off. And that's how I do it. Wipe any excess oil out and you'll see that. So guys, I lost one of those video clips. I don't know how, but just to recap, you honestly, just as soon as it starts wafting a little bit of smoke, you cut the heat off, you wipe out any excess oil that might pool up Sometimes if you put like a, a cold bacon fat in there, sometimes that'll happen. Just wipe any excess oil out so it doesn't turn rancid on you in storage or become sticky. Some oils will become really sticky and you don't want that in your Dutch oven. And then you're ready to store your Dutch oven as soon as it cools all the way down. And it takes a good hour to hour and a half for it to cool down. So be ready for that. And guys, I hope this inspires you to come along and uh, get to cooking in your Dutch oven. And um, I can't wait to see you next time for the next delicious recipe, whether it's in the Dutch oven or we're doing a canning video or whatever else we might be doing. But I, I have a strong suspicion we've got pizza coming up in the Dutch oven. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.